This is Comet Picks by the Glick. Hey, I'm your host, Jason Glick. Hey, you doing host, Jason Glick? Oh, I'm doing fine. It's like, it's after our troubles earlier this evening. I just sat back and watched um, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and just got a chance to detox from all the, all the drama earlier. How is that Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. series? I haven't even touched it or looked at it, really. Well, for for what it is, it's it's not bad. I mean, like the pilot was pretty was I like it. Right? When I saw the on the blog, it was some it was decently entertaining. It was off to a good start. Since then, I uh, you know it's it's probably channeled more the uh, you know classic TV action adventure type stuff. It's more probably something that would have been more home in the eighties than um, than it is now because it feels more just you know hey we're going on the adventure of the week as opposed to bringing the Marvel Universe to life, like, on the, on the TV. So, I mean, again, they did have that um, guest spot from Nick Fury, Samuel L. Jackson, a couple of weeks back, but that, that seems to be more of a, you know, so, hey, we actually we can get some of the A-list people to show up and, um, like, infuse the series and star, and star power and all. We're so, Disney, damn it, and we can get whoever the hell we want to in our TV series and our network. <laughs> that's... That that seems to be the kind of message they were sending there. But at this point, I said, "Hey, okay, you get Samuel, you can get Samuel L. Jackson. That's awesome." But now, like, okay, what about um, Danny Jr., Chris Hemsworth, uh, Chris Evans? And, hey, you know, like um, Thor's coming out in a couple of weeks, so I'm going to see um, uh, Hemsworth showing up in, in a bit. Uh, well, it's it's not like what it what it is it's decently entertaining, but in terms of the uh, series that I've actually made time for to watch. You know, mm-hmm. between, like, it's not as good as, say, The Walking Dead and Justified, but it is better than, than Under the Dome. So, take, take, make them that what you will. Alrighty. Well, and, uh, you know, speaking of comic book characters, or maybe some TV series spinoffs of them, okay, so what do you have for us tonight? Oh, well, I have um, an odd spotlight for, rather than falling for, um, quite, for a little while, it's like after a buddy of mine got me started on her graphic novels, I'm talking about um, Faith Aaron Hicks, who is one of the, uh, I, I don't know if I can say, like, say part of the new breed of creators, one who is more in, influenced by a manga than, than, say, American comics. But um, she has built up an, a fairly substantial body of work over the last couple of years, and I've been uh, here to what she's done. And I've been two of her of her work at um, Comic-Con, so you know, this is another extended, you know, hey, um, we're through all the crap out of Comic-Con, but it's done, it's always a great source for stuff. Okay, so anyway, it's like, the first thing I got was like birthday gift, you know, Christmas gift a couple of years back. Um, there was her first, first book called Zombies Calling. Now, this was, now this is kind of more of a, uh, you know, statement of intent showing you, hey, uh, first showing you, yes, she can create like a graphic novel length work, and um, it's like I perform like yeah, you know, just you know, get some attention and commit to something as opposed to just being a dancer in the art. So, but it's this is sort of about about Joss, about, about a grown a brittle file named Joss and her two friends who um, it's like we're just like I'm going through going to um school and college in Canada, and um, it's like it's for a lot of a lot of these I'll kind of like scream for zombies in the sense that. You know, Joss is just with zombie movies and also the rules for such. And it's, it's again, and on one hand, it's like it's, it, it works out pretty well. I mean, there is some dark some tropiness at work at the beginning when, you know, there's this um, question of whether or not um, Joss is actually like uh, seeing the zombies. Then we find out that, oh, yes, she is. And, oh, yeah, they are attacking the campus. It's kind of, a, it's. It's all right. Like I said, it's more, like it's more of a statement of intent than a you know, full-fledged um, you know, work at this at this point. It shows you. It shows you she's got great, great style. It's like an action and an and a fun of humor. Joss's and her examination of the rules of zombie movies is actually is pretty fun for the most part. It's like it's like I said, it's enter, it's entertaining, but it's kind of like say um, Quentin Tarantino's. I'm um, for dogs. I mean, it's like it's, it's like hey, you know, this person's got shops and they can go. They're going to do um, better stuff later on. That um, potential was was a bit more for second work on the war at Ellsmere. So, um, girl Jennifer, 
it's like we still kind of average um, upper class um, an individual gets a scholarship to this place that's um, pretty called El- Ellesmere. And she and our very first day, she winds up I'm running afoul of the uh, say the queen bee of the school, Emily. It's like, and I'm placing for it for an enemy for life. So, story is about is focused a lot on the uh, class divisions between the you know, it's like out uh, at school how Emily believes that you know like it, like you know, that she's part of the upper class so she has a right to be um, better than everyone else. If you like Juniper, you know, give the uh, give all everyone else like, bad ideas so that you can rise above your station and whatnot. However, Juniper has a friend in the uh, slightly eccentric um cat um, Cassie, who is kind of was kind of the old kind, of like in the middle middle class, middle class of the school. And she, but she also has a great knowledge of the uh, school's uh, backstory, including like, the origins of the uh, the Ellesmere, Ellesmere family, and just you know just some more um, supernatural aspects of the school as well. It's ju- it's really it's really entertaining in the sense that it's 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 all more character driven and it, it also highlights. Um, that Hicks has a real interest in um, magical realism, for lack of a better term. I won't say any more about that. It's kind of a spoiler in itself, but um, but the end, but the end, I does have does bring a nice um, resolution to the um, com- class conflicts between um, between Emily, Juniper, say, and and Cassie. It's like it's for the most part it does it's like it feels it feels pretty, majority of the book is pretty well grounded in in. Li- Conflicts and is um, really more entertaining because of that. And then the magical realism stuff does reel it said. It's actually an achievement in itself that it actually means that it feels um, really like I'm um, grounded. It doesn't feel like a giant cheat or like a, or you know, I'm um, rewriting the rules of the story. But no, like, um, it's too impressive to pull off that kind of And I'd love to say that the series is like also. Um, like you know, more further exploration of her, um, Cassie, um, Emily, and the rest of the Elsmere cast. But um, yeah, we get to see a second volume, which is something that I will touch upon later on. It seems to be a trend with her work. It also includes um, one of the volumes I got at um, at Comic Con. This is um, the first book she did for um, published the first second to um, a really nice. Um, Really nice, really diverse um, selection of works. These are the guys who published um, the photographer, um, which is so far the best um, best graphic novel that I read this year that hasn't come out this year. And also, um, they, they're the people behind um, Paul Pope's recent um, Batman book. Oh, yeah. Water tastes good after this evening. Anyway, um, Hicks, um, Friends with Boys, focuses on Maggie, a girl who's... Um, a group of homeschooled um, Molly Hicks herself in, in Canada, and she's got um, um, three brothers. Uh, one, one older one who's a big in, in the theater, two other ones who are kind of like um, two are twins who are common in The story picks up when, when she enters her first day of high, the first day of um, real high school, and it's like, and it, it also focuses on the, 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 the uh, teen trauma that you know, she, when she's trying to like, acclimate to um, getting in to, um, to interact with a lot of lot of young people instead of the uh, her close relationships with some family. Oh, and there's also the fact that she's haunted because there's a ghost that constantly follows her through the um, through the volume, and that she also um, it's maybe the ghost of a uh, of a ghost the wife of a captain of a ghost ship that arrived in the uh, harbor of her town um, a couple centuries back. She finds it, finds this, she finds this out from some friends she makes. Some of the uh, more um, you know off the track type, type characters, and uh, and it's interesting to see, and it's generally pretty interesting to find um, out just how she uh, interacts with these people, the brothers, it's like, and the uh, new friends she makes at school. It's a lot. It's it's it's, enter- it's entertaining. It's really it's really well drawn. Um, I mean, Hicks. Um, her work clearly has a um, very uh, manga influence. I mean, you can see them. You can see the eyes if you're into like the old big eyes thing. But she's also got a very, very expressive um, sense, 
Sons of Saturn that works really well throughout the month. Like, you're not going to work. A buddy of mine actually I'm pointed out quite correctly that she that it does resemble um, like um, Barney O'Malley of um, Scott Pilgrim's name, but, um, but Hicks also has like a real sense of diversity and sense of how she can just like draw just about anything from ghosts to ghosts to um, cemeteries and whatnot. So, so for all, like, if Friends of the Boys was, it, was an interesting read, it's like, and it, and, and, it, and in this exploration of high, high school drama. Um, it does, however, leave lots of um, little threads hanging in the sense that you wonder what happened to uh, Maggie's, Maggie's mother, um, what is the ghost um, doing around her, and things like that. And there is a complete story in here, but kind of with the war in Elsmere, um, you, you are still wondering, you know, what's going to happen next? You know, what's, what are we, we going to get after, after this? Uh, I don't know, but I would certainly love to find out. But all I can say is that, you know, regrettably, this does not appear like the reward elsewhere. It does not seem to have sold in quantities um, massive enough to warrant a sequel. Hopefully that will change in the future. Anyway, she also, but um, Hicks does have a, a fondness for superhero material. Um, that's, you can see that in her um, Wolverine Eggs story that she fan published on the internet. Just go Google it. We'll say Faith Aaron Hicks, Wolverine Eggs. And you should be able to find it. It's a fun little story about Wolverine being very, very particular about the eggs he gets and fighting ninjas as well. It's good fun. But um for um legitimate to pay her if you know, come by and buy so you can look for um for your enjoyment is on um, the adventures of superhero girl Dark Horse. This is a collection of her uh, a bunch of strips she's on featuring the character. See, Supergirl is just like a girl goes on cape in a cape mask and just like fights crime in her, like, in her, in her small Canadian town. It's still not a very crime ridden town. Yeah, it's got ninjas. There's a creature that um that has tentacles and whiskers that um, falls in space at one point. But, you know, it's kind of like but it's like a far less crime than, say, you know, Marvel, Marvel's New York, or DC's Metropolis, or Gotham City. It's like, it's, it's as Kirk beats it, um, nails in his introduction. It's really more of a, uh, you know, story about, through Kirk's thing, about just, you know, like people dealing with the, you know, trials of growing up, you know, just moving out, striking on your own, trying to establish your own your identity, and dealing with the little things, like, you know, like the, um, wa- when the uh, global wash your, in your town, like shrinks your cave, and um, dealing with your mom by um, worrying about how your superhero career is going, dealing with a guy who doesn't believe that you're a real superhero, you don't have a real tragedy in your past, things like that. It's it's fun, rounded, character-driven humor that that, that for me, I mean, it's not it's not filled with a bunch of like you know like laugh out loud belly laughs, but it's more just like amusing, smile, chuckle. And go, hey, you know, it's kind of cute. Like when she, um, the superhero girl completely bigs out the, the fact that the um, giant space alien monster has whiskers. And she's like, it's oh, it's so adorable. And then he breathes fire right in her face. It's like, it's, that's the uh, kind of humor you're dealing with here. And I think it's generally pretty, generally pretty fun for the most part. Oh, it's also got a bear with a monocle. That's, that's good fun too. It's like, I, so I have no idea if there's going to be any more, um, like collections of these, but it's the thing I would invest in. Now, it's also another center that's also, and she's also um, willing to work with others and, um, and talk, um, you know, so illustrate their scripts as well. Now, one series I'd heard about for a while back that I never got around to was called um, Brain Camp. Um, it's basically about these two Let's see these two um, like students that the, that, um, who they're they're they're, they're kind of like you know, they're not really like exceptional like types. There's Jenna who's a dreamer and Lucas who's kind of a uh, kind of a screw up more than anything else. And they're they're something they're mysteriously recruited to this new team camp called Camp Fielding, and um, it's just main, which is which is the aim has the aim to turn them into second. Turn, turn its um, attendees into geniuses. 
tell something's not right at this camp because people start um, you know, acting strangely out of character and start belching feathers, getting their throats in their face, all oh, just meet the odd um, that bird corpse um, popping up here and there. On one hand, um, sort of, let's see, this play, um, single volume work written by um, Susan King and Lawrence Clavon. And um, more than, and well, um, it says a, um, pretty, has a really good, um, good imprinter style on, um, it's like, on the material she has. This one, not so much. Because it's, because it really does, it doesn't, it doesn't really have her feel, like, um, compared to some of the other stuff I've seen. She was really working from a script with these people as opposed to show to, um, giving to her own views or anything else. It's confident. And I can see that you know, younger readers having more, more fun with this, and being they're not as simple to many tropes and the general predictability of the story. But, you know, compared to this, to other stuff, I was actually kind of disappointed by this. It was, um, I don't know. So it was, it, it's a couple of things executed, to um, say nothing, else. but at the same time, it's, it feels like the hands before. They've done better, better. There, there are some clever bits. It's um, uh, been a new this um, this and they can overcome the uh, see a mind control aspect through teenage hormones. Um, generally, it's like uh, I don't know. It's like I, 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 I generally give this a pass compared to the edge. However, what I wouldn't give a pass on is nothing can possibly go wrong, which is a um, which is originally serialized as a webcomic and adapted from a uh, like from a pro story by um, by Prudence Shen. And this, um, like I said, if I hadn't known that um, this is like an adaptation, then I wouldn't have been able to tell. It does it does bear her style. It's more great. In fact, I'd probably say this is probably the thing I've, I've enjoyed um, probably most without reservation um, from all the other things I've talked about here. It's about um, a Charlie... Um, he's a jockey in baseball team, and he's also friends with um, Nate, who's kind of the uh, neur- like neurotic uber nerd who's head of the robotic school's robotics club. They find themselves, um, they've got a, like, a unique, um, weird friendship going on, but um, that, that's threatened by the fact that um, the uh, school, ca- that the principal decided to leave up to the school council to decide whether or not um, like, like the funds they deserve go go towards getting the cheerleaders uniforms or um, sending the robotics club to the to their like their bikes fair. So cheerleaders um, who are kind of a very um, let's see how much word to describe them very um, high minded like like group led by by Holly who was up, up to the beginning of the volume um, Nate's girlfriend no sorry Charlie's girlfriend. Um, they. It's like they basically um, wage war, wage war, war on popularity and social ma- manipulation in order to get um, um, Charlie as into the um, school um, ca- school council president. But um, Nate, his own, his own, his own hands. This leads to a predictable war of word. War wards in between two two groups, like you know, cheerleaders and nerds, like in, like in the course of school. And, it, and on one hand, it's like, you know, that first step, that's only totally the first half of the book in the sense that, you know, it's like, yes, it's entertaining enough, but then the, uh, the conflict between them is, is um, carried out to a logical conclusion with um, both of them getting screwed out of, of the funds. So, what's next? Well, into the ash to learn the fine art of working together in order to solve solve their problems. It's like, and also, um, Charlie has to um, has to find out, um, like, deal with the drama of his current separation and his mother's eventual, eventual remarriage. It's like it's, it's like it's good. It's re- it's really good fun. It's like um, all the characters come like the personalities are somewhat exa- exaggerated, but it's but it's a good comedic effect. You don't feel. They don't feel stretched to the point of um of disbelief. It's like and uh, it's like it's and I like the twist they put that um that that Shannon Hicks put on the char- characters as as the series go series go on. 
It's like it's 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 very fun, and not in comparison to um, Hicks' other works, um, this one is a nice complete story. I mean, yeah, I'm sure that you could do something else with these characters, but there's no threads up any in the end. In fact, you know, it's like this this is like a, a good as a as a movie made to have, and um, well. So all the adventures of superhero girl, friends with boys, and Ward, Ward Elsner are all highly recommended. Uh, I think um, you could possibly go wrong for the one I, when I enjoy it most. Uh, I'd also like to talk about her, her contributions to the, um, the Last of Us with um, American Greens, but um, that has yet to hit trade for the back. That is something I'm thoroughly looking forward to uh, to talk about since when I heard it's meant to tell the story of um, Ellie's um, like early days the first right around she, she got infected her world changed like um, changed to the changed for the worse. I'm really looking forward to checking that out when it gets feedback. But all four issues that are are available right now. And um, I can, it was a um, minor hit when it came out thanks to the success of the game. Just fucking awesome probably my game in the year so far before reading the uh, Novels and extension of that, so it also has contributions from the game's director, Druckmann. Yeah, I think I'm Hicks. She's a class, she's a class like from just from reading her graphic novels alone. I certainly, um, I'm looking forward to seeing what she does next. Hopefully, you know, it's something like that will be like you know, following up on Ward Elsner or own threads in Friends of Boys. But regardless, she, she certainly, certainly time to keep an eye on. I'm looking forward to seeing what she's got in store for us next. John, any thoughts on this? Not this time, sir. All right. Okay. I will just leave it at that, then, and I'm saying that next time, well, according to Amazon, the final volume of Jeff John's um, run on Green Lantern is um, arriving. It it will be in my hands next week, and I going to, you know, eat, eat that shit up because, you know, as I said, you can't really overstate his contributions to the franchise. Okay. Well, until next time, we'll talk to you on Comic Picks by the Glick. Alright, laters.